another NECA review. And by Odin's beard, what a great figure we have. That's right, everybody, I've got the quarter scale Thor. I've just come back from uh, the convention in Antwerpen, and I bought myself some NECA goodies. I bought uh, Thor, I've got the, the quarter scale Big Red Predator, and I've also got the quarter scale, I think it's the City Hunter, I haven't got him to hand. Uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge thanks to the guys at Comic Toys for hooking me up with this guy. They're the only ones that had it. So, awesome. <laughs> he is absolutely phenomenal. Um, NECA just seemed to be getting better and better with their uh, quarter-scale figures. Um, straight out of the packaging. Uh, unfortunately, the packaging for Thor was left in Holland as I wasn't able to fit this in my suitcase. So these guys were bubble-wrapped up and shoved in my bag um, but the packaging is it's uh, pretty much plain and uh, just your bog standard uh, quarter scale packaging from NECA with a very short bio about Thor on the back but if you don't know who Thor is then you've probably been sleeping under some form of rock yes um, straight out of the box uh, instantly drawn to the head ah <laughs> um, now, don't get me wrong, the head sculpt itself isn't bad. It's actually a really good head sculpt, um, and it really does look like Thor. But, there is a big but, and it's not mine. It doesn't look overly like Chris Hemsworth. Uh, it literally does just look like uh, Thor. Um, this could be anybody posing as Thor. It could be the comic book Thor. Um, he's in the... Uh, Thor 2 movie armour, but uh, at no point did I remember Chris Hemsworth having kind of uh, dreads. <laughs> um, good old Thor Marley here. He's uh, I, I can see where they've gone. He does have like that thick woven hair, but it, this is literally, I mean, you can see the braids. Uh, the braiding on the hair does look really nice. Um, and the detailing itself is phenomenal. It does look like hair kind of being blown in the wind, but it does, it, it's just kind of chunky and does resemble kind of dreadlocks. And um, it's not completely uncanny. I mean, I still think this is better than the Hot Toys uh, movie one sculpt uh, for Thor. That that was terrible. That, that didn't even look like, well, I don't know what that looked like. I don't know where they got their inspiration for that from. Detailing on the uh, beard here and the paint apps on the stubble are absolutely impeccable. Really, really good shading. Very slight paint blemishes around the uh, hairline. But all in all, probably one of the uh, best paint apps I've seen them do on a face. Um, they seem to be getting a lot better with the uh, quality control on the paint apps. I don't think I've heard of many people, again, look, it's very small bubbling there right up the top. Haven't really heard many people complaining about the applications of paint on this guy. I mean, that hair is just incredible. That is fantastically sculpted. I mean, this beard line comes all the way around here. And even when it stops, you've still got like this shading around the lower neck to indicate that uh, he's kind of got like five o'clock shadow underneath the beard. Whilst around the head area, I do have a small gripe. Uh, I personally feel that the colour they've used for the neckline is just a little bit too pale. Um, it's a really nice flesh tone, but it just doesn't match the face or the arms. Uh, I just think it's just a little bit too pale. They maybe could have done a little bit more shading around that area. Taking a look at his arms and the chest armour, as you can see, the arms are a much uh, closer kind of colour, if you must, uh, to the neck, um, to the face, as opposed to the neckline. And there's just a small kind of flesh tone under here, which is the body shell, which the paint is kind of painted on top of. And again, that is slightly off colour and it kind of more matches the neck piece. I think it may be to do with the uh, plastics that have been used. Going down his arms, Fantastic uh, application of paint again with the veins, everything coming through. Maybe could have done with a bit more uh, vein detail like they did with the uh, 
Arnie Predator figure. Going down to the gauntlets, again, fantastic detailing right here. I mean, this honestly, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it really does almost look metallic and kind of solid. Um, but it is just that, that same rubbery plastic used on the uh, torso. You've got this beautiful uh, kind of rustic, battle damaged torso. Again, really love what they've done with the huge discs that uh, clip the uh, cape in place. Fantastic detailing on this guy all throughout. They've not missed a trick at all. Coming down to the leg, you've got this lovely uh, painted and sculpted kind of chain mail here with this, again, painted and sculpted uh, kind of leather chap things come down to the knee, which uh, has a really realistic knee pad. And then you've got this really nice high rise boot with fantastic metal detailing down the front. Really, really crisp. Very, very nice. Almost, uh, almost chrome in appearance. And then down to the base of the boots. They have done an amazing job with this guy. Now Thor comes with one accessory and one accessory alone and that of course is Mjolnir. <laughs> I absolutely uh, love the detailing on Mjolnir. They've got this really really nice kind of Norse Viking style decal around the edge of Mjolnir and again this really nice brushed steel effect going down to the handle Really nice detailing. And then at the again at the bottom there, fantastic. Looks incredible. Just on the hilt of a hammer. Really, really nice detailing. They have really gone to town with this, getting it movie accurate. Now let's take a look at the articulation on Thor. Let's start with the uh, head. He is somewhat hindered by his golden luscious locks. He's got a little bit of up motion, fairly good down motion. It does kind of rotate. Again, it's just the hair getting caught here. Um, that's pretty much all the movement you're going to get, which is slightly, um, it's slightly saddening because of the way the eyes are positioned. Uh, they're kind of looking kind of slightly offset so it's hard to get the head up just high enough to look at the other characters. Looking at the arm you've got this nice deep kind of uh, shoulder joint there. It is on a ball so you've got full rotation. Coming to the upper bicep you've got 360 swivel, a single jointed elbow but again it is on a pivot, so you've got some freaky arm breaking motion there. Um, the gauntlet itself is that individually articulated? No. Nope. The next articulation point is the wrist, which is on a swivel and a pivot. Now, there is a waist swivel. If you kind of grab him by the crotch, you can rotate the upper body. There is a very slight ab crunch in there, but again, it's very hindered by this uh, rubbery plastic uh, armour that he's wearing. Coming down to the thigh, you've got this really nice thigh joint the neck I seem to be using in the majority of the newer uh, quarter scale figures. It's, if I can just lift up your skirt, my dear, uh, you've kind of a ball joint set in there as well as a kind of DC-UC style outward swivel. So you get a fairly, oh, that's tight, a fairly nice range of movement. It's just very, very stiff in there. You've got this upper thigh swivel, as well as a really nice deep, 
double jointed kneecap. And again, the detailing on these knee pads, really, really good. They really do a good job of hiding that knee joint. You've got a swivel at the top of the boot. And going down, you've got this new necker kind of ball on the feet, which is superb and keeps the figure really balanced. Taking a look at the cape, it's a very nice uh, soft material, very similar to that that they used with the Superman. It is fixed at both the uh, chest points. Uh, it would have been nice to have um, maybe some wire or something just to be able to pose it slightly. But all in all, it's a really nice cloth, uh, kind of double skinned and very effective. It's, <laughs> it does what it says on the tin, it's uh, Thor's cloak. So, And just looking at the bottom here, he's got kind of this blue kind of undergarment. Um, <laughs> um, all in all, it really does work well. All in all, I think Thor really does work well. Okay, he's not uh, movie accurate, but in comparison to the Henry Carvel Superman, for example, um, the figure itself just didn't feel or look quite right. Um, and the head sculpt, again, was really off. But this, I think... It passes as Thor. There's there's no way you'd mistake this for anybody else. You'd say, oh, look, he's got Thor. You may not say, oh, look, he's got Chris Hemsworth. But, yeah, you know, he he does look very Nordic. Um, he looks like a Viking. <laughs> and he sculpted really well. The armour itself is second to none. I can't fault it. The paint apps are impeccable. The material used is very resilient and very hard wearing. Um, it just just looks really realistic and spot on. <laughs> it's a very good value for money figure. And how does he scale? I hear you ask. <laughs> really really well. Um, he's about the same kind of height as, uh, as Steve Rogers-ish. <laughs> um, uh, I think he scales well. Um, he's slightly slanted just to the way I've had his uh, legs posed. Um, but bulk-wise, he is bigger than uh, Captain America. He is a heavier figure than Iron Man. I think he does look the part with the rest of the Avengers. Of course, I will be getting the battle-damaged Steve Rogers because they've done a sterling job with the teased head sculpt that they've shown. Wasn't a fan of the battle-damaged Iron Man, so I'm going to stick with the one I've got. And fingers crossed for uh, the 24 inchish. Hulk, we should be getting. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping for a Black Widow. Ooh. Oh yeah, Black Widow. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave you guys with some uh, photos of Thor in some awesome poses, just to show you how poseable he is. Now, my advice to you is do what I've done with uh, Captain America here. It's just a simple doll stand. Uh, you can get them anywhere. Pick them up from any hobby store. It's just like so. There's no point in buying one of the expensive like necker ones. These ones are just perfectly well. You can have them around the legs or have them up around the thigh. You've got plenty of height there. These are like two, three dollars. And stability wise, okay, yes, Thor's feet are a heck of a lot better than the earlier necker figures, but it's still an 80. $80 toy, $90 toy. Um, if he's going to take a dive off the top shelf, he ain't going to bounce too well. I just don't think it's worth the risk. They're, they're not them. You can paint up the bases. Maybe I'll have them all kind of done the same. I'll do a diorama maybe of um, like some battle torn streets and I could just paint them up kind of a greyish, concrete colour. And you wouldn't even know, especially with Thor, because he's got his cloak and that rubber armour. You could just hide it completely underneath. 
Uh, so I'm going to try him out with some kind of flying poses. Um, and yeah, all in all, extremely impressed. And this is a must, a must for NECA collectors, a must for Marvel collectors, and a must for the love of Odin's beard. For myself and Thor, goodbye. Goodbye.